Hey what's up guys? Today I'll show you a horror film, Cigarette Burns, the 8th episode of the first season of Masters of Horror. Spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. A rare films dealer and cinema owner, Kirby, is invited by Bellinger, a cinephile, to his home as a guest. Kirby agrees and drives to Bellinger's quiet mansion entrance, where he is greeted and guided by an Asian butler. During the conversation with Bellinger, Kirby notices a poster on the wall. It is a poster of La Fin Absolute du Monde, The Absolute End of the World, a very famous horror movie. Bellinger inquires about Kirby's knowledge of the movie. Kirby's awareness is limited to stories he overheard. During its premiere screening, there was a bloody riot inside the cinema. Afterward, authorities ordered that the film be destroyed. Bellinger tells him that there is a surviving copy. As the conversation progresses, Kirby's attention is drawn towards a huge pair of wings on the wall. Bellinger notices Kirby admiring the wings, and tells him that they are from the film. Now Bellinger is very interested in the film. He missed the chance to attend the premiere, which he feels is the biggest regret of his life. He wants to hire Kirby to find that last surviving copy of it for him. Kirby expresses his concern, saying he is afraid the copy no longer exists. Bellinger tells him firmly that he is convinced it does, and is somewhere out there. Bellinger leads Kirby into a secret room, where they find a pale man chained up. There are two horrific wounds on the man's back, which appear to be where a pair of wings were cut off. Bellinger introduces the pale man as an actor from the film. Bellinger throws some ice cubes at the man, teasing him. The man turns around, hunched over, telling Kirby that as he is part of the film, he can sense the existence of the copy of the film. Kirby is startled by what he has seen, and doesn't know what to say. Bellinger offers Kirby $100,000 to find the film. What's more, Kirby can play this film in his cinema for two weeks free of charge. Kirby is tempted but increases the fee to $200,000. Bellinger hesitates for a moment, then agrees, glancing at the pale man with a smirk. Back at his cinema, Kirby is sitting in his chair, lost in thought. He looks at the picture on his desk. The beautiful woman in the picture is his late wife. Kirby is not interested in the film. He is just desperate for money. Just at that moment, the projectionist rushes in to report to him, complaining about the cigarette burns, which is the mark on the films indicating a switch over to the next volume. The projectionist hates it, because there will be chaos every time a cigarette burn appears. Kirby is not in the mood for his complaints. He tells the projectionist that he is going to look for the famous film, and will be absent for a while. He will leave the cinema to him for the time being. The projectionist has heard of the film, and promises he will take care of the cinema. After the projectionist leaves, Kirby starts to read the information about the film that Bellinger gave him. In a trance, he thinks of his wife again. His father-in-law didn't approve of their relationship, and gave him a check for $200,000 to buy the cinema he wanted, but on the condition that he left her. Kirby accepted the money, and broke up with her. She couldn't accept the fact that the man she loved would leave her for the money, she slashed her wrists in the bathtub, and committed suicide. Since then, Kirby and his father-in-law hate each other even more. They both blame each other for her suicide. The next morning, once the cinema has opened, Kirby's father-in-law bursts in. He demands that Kirby returns the $200,000 immediately. Kirby promises him that he will give it back. His father-in-law shows him a gun on his waist, gives him a murderous look, and tells him that he only has a week. Once things have settled down again, Kirby continues to study the information about the film. The information leads him to a critic that wrote reviews of the film, and is obsessed with it. Kirby travels to his house, and knocks at the door. The critic doesn't seem to like visitors. The critic responds coldly, until the movie is mentioned. Kirby intends to ask questions about it. The critic finally opens the door for him. Kirby tells him he is looking for the last copy of the film, and would like to know more about it. The critic tells him that the director is simply a terrorist. He used the film as a weapon to murder the audience. Kirby thinks this is an exaggeration, and according to the reviews, he doesn't think the film is so frightening. The critic puts the pen down, solemnly explains that the review doesn't tell all of it. During the premiere, the cinema was like a slaughterhouse, which was planned by the director. Before the premiere, the director told him what was going to happen. Since then, the critic has been writing a review of the film. Kirby looks through the manuscript, and is surprised at the critic's work. Kirby explains to him that he has been hired to find the copy of the film, the critic gives him an audio tape, and begs him to let him watch the movie if he finds it. Whoever sees the film will be bewitched by it. Later, back at home, Kirby is laid on his bed listening to the audio tape. 
it was the interview with the film's director, who despised all the entertainment films in Hollywood. As he is listening, suddenly, a cigarette burn appears in the air, and startles Kirby. He rushes to take the headphones off, and notices a human shadow walking around in the toilets. He walks towards the toilet quietly, and pushes the door open. His wife comes into his view. She is lying in the bathtub with blood spurting from her wrist. The cigarette burn appears again. In the middle of the circle is his wife's bloody face. Kirby wakes up, and realizes it was just a dream. The next day, Kirby meets one of his friends, Henri, who was a projectionist and works in a film library now. Kirby is hoping he can learn something from Henri. Henri only has written documentation about the director. He tells Kirby to feel free to read it by himself. Kirby is shocked to learn that except for the director and cameraman, all of the crew were dead. Kirby asks Henri if he knows where the cameraman lives, stating that he would like to visit him. Henri tells him that the cameraman is blind, and he hates the film and the director. There is no way he would help Kirby. Kirby is not convinced. How could Henri know so much? Henri can't tell him anything more, so he leaves disappointed. As soon as Kirby steps out of the door, he hears Henri calling someone, telling the person about Kirby looking for the film. At night, before Henri leaves the office for the day, Kirby returns and questions him, asking why he would not help him, and why he is telling others about Kirby's intentions. Henri says he did this for his own good. Kirby tells Henri that he saw cigarette burns in thin air last night. Henri confirms that if Kirby is telling the truth, it means that Kirby has been part of the movie. Worse things are going to happen to him. Then Henri shows him his left hand, which has been in his pocket. Kirby discovers Henri's left hand is burnt and twisted. Henri was the projectionist at a screening of the film for some rich people. When the film began he saw some cigarette burns, then he started to lose consciousness. Then all of the audience members started killing each other. He passed out before he could stop the film. When he woke up, his left hand was badly burnt and disfigured. Kirby explains that he doesn't want to watch the film. He is just looking for it for someone else, and he needs that money urgently. Henri gives him a contact, a filmmaker who doesn't have the copy, but is a fan of the director. Maybe that person can help him find the director. Kirby calls the filmmaker and arranges to meet up in a factory. He takes a taxi there and asks the taxi driver to wait for him outside for around 10 minutes. He goes into the factory, following two of the filmmaker's men. Kirby tells him that he is looking for the film. The filmmaker says the reason why Henri sent him here is because he can see the cigarette burns, which means he is part of the film. The filmmaker continues to tell him that he hasn't seen it, but he likes the director, and he wants to make a film like that. If Kirby can help him make the film, he would lend some materials of the film to Kirby. Kirby agrees. The filmmaker shows him some still photos. It turns out that in the film, they captured a real angel and cut his wings off. The angel is the pale man chained up in Bellinger's house. Suddenly, the filmmaker's men seize him and inject him with an anesthetic. When he wakes up, he is tied to a chair. Sitting in front of him is the female taxi driver, who was waiting for him outside. She is tied up too. The filmmaker decapitates the driver, while murmuring the true meaning of the film. Kirby struggles and swears at the filmmaker. It is pure murder. The filmmaker straddles him, leering and touching him inappropriately, and tells him that the secret of the film lies in the angel. The angel is sacrificed in the movie, so everyone who watches the film or is in any way connected with it, will ultimately become part of the film, including Kirby. The filmmaker gets more and more excited. He seizes Kirby by the throat. Just then, Kirby sees the cigarette burn, inside which is his wife. The filmmaker stares at him fiercely, and asks him who he saw. The cigarette burn appears again, and his vision starts to twist, and he sees a blinding flash of light. Moments later, Kirby is conscious and free. He sees dead bodies all around him and realizes he killed them. The filmmaker is still alive and lying on the ground, injured. Kirby hits him several times, then grabs the material and runs. Kirby combs through the documentation, and stumbles across the director's address. He rushes there immediately, knocking at the door only to be received at home by the director's wife. Kirby learns from the director's wife that the director was obsessive about the film, driven to madness almost. He attempted to kill his wife, and then committed suicide. Luckily, his wife survived. That's why she hates the film so much. She should have destroyed the film sooner, but didn't act. Kirby understands how she feels about the situation, and lost from his own experience. He asked her to hand the film over to him. 
the director's wife agrees without any hesitation. While Kirby is locating and removing the film from the shelf, he recalls visions of the cigarette burns. He asks her if she knows anything about it. She says if he has seen it, it means he has become part of the film. The moment Kirby listened to the audio tape, he has been marked. Not just the audience of the film will be affected, everyone who is related to it all will also suffer misfortune. Hearing this, Kirby hesitates for a moment. He thinks he might escape this misfortune, because he is only looking for the film for others, and he will not watch it himself. What's more, he really needs that money to pay back his father-in-law, so he decides to take the film with him. Kirby arrives at Bellinger's home, and hands him the films from the boot of his car. Bellinger is ecstatic to see the film. He touches it excitedly, and tells Kirby he has felt the charm of the film. He pays Kirby $200,000 as promised, and then puts the film into his own projector. Bellinger watches the film while enjoying champagne. Having handed over the film, Kirby drives back to his own cinema, only to find the doors are closed. He calls the projectionist to find out why, and he is told it is his father-in-law that closed it down. Kirby is furious. Just then, he receives a call from Bellinger, who asks him to come over to his house again immediately. Kirby drives back after hanging up the phone. When he arrives, he is startled to see the butler holding a knife, topless and covered in cuts. The butler frantically questions him, asking if he brought the film to the house in a fraught and panicked manner. After saying you will be punished to Kirby, the butler gouges out his own eyes. Kirby runs past the maniacal butler to the projection room. The movie is nearly finished. Bellinger, who is standing near the projector, trembling, tells Kirby that he wanted him to find another good movie, but now he has changed his mind. He wants to make one by himself. When he has finished speaking, he cuts his belly open and begins to pull his intestines out of his body and load them into the reels of a projector like a film. Kirby can't bear to see this horrific scene and runs out of the room. In the hallway, he meets his father-in-law, who is pointing a gun at him. It turns out that his father-in-law had been waiting for him at his cinema. He gets so angry with Kirby that he has completely ignored his own business and is just hellbent on revenge. All that matters to him is to kill the man who in his mind caused his daughter's death. He followed Kirby here from the cinema. Even though he has no idea what is going at Bellinger's house, he intends to kill Kirby and frame the butler or Bellinger. Suddenly, a cigarette burn appears in the air. Kirby attempts to grab the gun, causing a struggle. Just then, another cigarette burn appears, and their visions begin to twist. When Kirby awakens, he finds himself covered in blood, sitting in a chair. The famous film is playing in front of him. His father, who tried to kill him, is sitting in the front seat, also bloody, watching the film with sorrow. A cigarette burn appears on the screen. Kirby's wife walks out from it with blood all over her body. She cries to her father that she is cold. Kirby's father-in-law is so happy to see his daughter, who he has been missing day and night. He takes off his jacket and wraps it around her shoulders, telling her that everything is going to be okay. She says she is hungry and bites her father's neck. Kirby understands that his father-in-law is having hallucinations. He walks down to him and tells him that they both see her because they love her deeply. She dies again and again every time they see her. The only way to end this is to kill themselves. Then he kills his father-in-law and stuffs his mouth with a check. After his father-in-law dies, Kirby sits down, feeling relieved. He gives his wife who is on the screen a smile and says, I love you. Then he shoots himself with the gun when yet another cigarette burn appears in the air. Meanwhile, the blind butler crawls toward the angel and sets him free. The angel takes the film reels from the projector and goes to the projection room. He stops by Kirby's corpse and says thank you. As the angel leaves, a cigarette burn appears again. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.